In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to um, build a one sample bootstrap confidence interval using R, specifically the tools found in the Mosaic package. Now, since we're going to be using the Mosaic package, we'll want to load that library. And on my script here, uh, that's not the first thing that I do. So I'll run library mosaic. Remember that I could also go to the packages tab, scroll down to the M's, and then check the option next to the name of the package. After I do that, I need a data set to work with. I'm going to use the TV data set that we talked about in class during exploration four. So I can read that in. There's a um, CSV out there on the class website, tv.csv. So if I run this command, it'll open up this screen where I can go find my data set. And now I have that loaded in. I'll click on the TV object over here in my environment tab. And I'll see the overall structure. I'm going to see I have two columns, one for the time, the duration of the commercials in this 30 minute slot, the other for whether or not it was on basic or extended cable. And since we're working with a one sample bootstrap, I just want to focus on the basic cable to replicate uh, that bootstrap distribution we used in class. And in order to do that, I need to ignore everything that was from extended cable. So I can subset my TV data set using the subset command. So subset TV comma cable equal equal basic. Running that. And then typing in basic will show me the new data set. So I have 10 rows, which is exactly what I want to work with. Now the first step to calculate the plugin confidence interval uh, for the one sample bootstrap would be to calculate X bar. And we can do that just using the basic tools from exploratory data analysis. We know that the mean function will do that for us. And we have it of this form, tilde time, that's pulling up, telling us what column of the data set to use, and data equals basic. So we have that, and if I type in X bar to my console and hit enter, I see that the mean duration of these commercials is 9.21 minutes. Now what we want to do is resample these times, right? We want to sample with replacement from these original 10 times, just like we did with the 10-sided dice in class. In order to help uh, show you what's going on here, I thought we could first look at how this resample function works on a very simple data set. So I'm just going to string the numbers 1 to 5 together in this simple underscore data object. And what you're going to see is that with resample, it's just going to sample with replacement from, with the, from those five values all with equal probability. So we can do that, and we could do this a large number of times, but we can also string these together using the function do. So do with a num integer in there, and then you use the asterisk, and whatever you want to do that many times will be on the right of that. So we want to resample from this simple data five times. That's what this highlighted snippet of code will do. And as you see, we get five resamples from this data set. Now we can do this with our data set. So let's see what it looks like if I resample from the basic object. And what you can see is that it gives me new times here. So I've resampled the seventh observation a couple times, the fourth observation four times. But we know that that can happen because we're resampling with replacement here. We're sampling with replacement. Now the nice thing is that we could nest this res we can nest this resample function or this result within the mean function because it has this column named time. So if I want to get a new sample and calculate the mean all in one fell swoop, that's what this highlighted passage will do. As it, so now I've resampled from the basic data set again. All I really want is the mean here to calculate or to get to the bootstrap distribution of the means. That's 8.97 from this sample. And I can do this five times just like before. And what you'll see is that I get my results, a column of results, each with a bootstrap statistic. Now, instead of the mean, you could use 
the median, the trimmed mean, you can do a lot of different things here. Um, so you do have a lot of options. Now let's do this a large number of times and store our result it's to get this bootstrap distribution. So let's do this a thousand times uh, in line 24 of my code here. And I'm going to run this. It'll take a second or two. And now I can use a histogram in order to display my results. So that's going to show the bootstrap distribution. We can see it's approximately symmetric and it's certainly unimodal. And remember what X bar was, that it should be close to the center of this bootstrap distribution. And right now, X bar's 9.21. Looks like we'll be pretty close here based on the histogram. We could also look at the mean of the results, data equal trials. And we'll see that, yeah, we're pretty darn close um, to um, right on the money with our bootstrap distribution. So now what we want to do is calculate the standard error to get to that plug-in estimate of our 95% confidence interval or the plug-in form of the 95% confidence interval. And that standard error, remember, will just be the standard deviation of this bootstrap distribution. So I can run this line of code here where I'm going to make SE my standard error. And I'm just using SD to calculate the standard deviation. So you'll see that my standard error is about 4. Point or 0.423, and then I can manually go through and calculate my confidence interval. My lower bound would be x bar minus 2 times the standard error, which gives me about 8.36. My upper bound would be x bar plus 2 times the standard error, and that's 10.06 minutes approximately. So that's one method. The other method we talk about in class is the percentile bootstrap confidence interval. And so let's say we wanted to make a 95% bootstrap or percentile bootstrap confidence interval. So we use this confident function on our bootstrap distribution, which we call trials. We give it a confidence level in decimal form. So it's 0.95 here. And then you need to specify method equals quantile. And this gives us a lower bound of 8.3 four or so to an upper bound of 10. Remember that these will be a bit different because they're doing different things to calculate this confidence interval. But if you have a unimodal symmetric bootstrap distribution, they should be quite close. And the nice thing about this is I could change my confidence level to, let's say, 0.9, so 90% confidence interval. And I just use the same command and we get a confidence interval very easily. So that's how you conduct a one sample uh, bootstrap procedure to build confidence intervals for the mean in R.